Coral reefs are one of the most important ecosystems on the planet, providing habitats to countless amounts of species. But they are now facing unprecedented threats like climate change, pollution or overfishing. Today on Leo's Animal Planet, we're looking at one of the most endangered animals, not plants, animals on the planet. Corals. Corals are microscopic, tiny little animals. Many of us may think that they are like seaweed, like plants, but no, they are real animals. They're from the same families as sea anemones and jellyfish. Most structures that we call coral are actually made up of hundreds of thousands of tiny microscopic creatures called polyps. They are only a few millimetres long and these microscopic animals have tiny exoskeletons but also really hard made of calcium carbonate. Now these, these polyps are sessile and this means fixed to one place so they cannot move. Even if they want to they cannot. So what are polyps? Polyps are soft bodies animals with mouths surrounded by tentacles. They are the main basic building blocks of corals and they are similar to sea anemones. Now, how are corals formed? Once polyps find a nice rock, they go into it and produce calcium carbonate. There are different types of corals, like hard corals, soft, corals hard corals have are made of six tentacles and they also produce calcium carbonate while soft corals they are made of eight tentacles and they produce a protein called gorgonate what do corals eat so like every animal corals need to eat to get energy and to help them live like like we do at night when everything's dark they reach out with their tentacles and they grab zooplankton and marine debris and now their tentacles are covered in tiny tiny little spikes called nematocysts and these spikes they pierce the prey a release of toxin that paralyzes them. It then uses the tentacles to take the prey and put it in its mouth. They also have a mucus around their body and this traps them. Now when you have all the polyps, somehow their stomachs become connected. And this is called a cenosarc. And this means that individual polyps work together as a group, feed each other and it's just amazing because they can live together like one massive organism. They also get their energy from an amazing partnership called Zuzantele as Zuzantele is a type of algae. This algae uses energy from the sun to photosynthesize. And then it produces 95% that the coral needs. Oxygen, sugar, and fat. The coral, on the other hand, produces carbon dioxide, phosphorus, and nitrogen. And it also gives the algae a protected place to live. This trade-off uh, is called a symbiotic relationship. Now the oldest coral lived 450 million years ago and corals can create massive, huge, big, ginormous reefs. Thousands of marine species can be found living on one coral reef. The Great Coral Reef, for example, contains thousands of mollusks, fish, sharks, dolphins, cetaceans. Corals are found in all of Earth's oceans, from tropical to freezing temperatures. However, they only build coral reefs 
in warm, shallow reefs in the tropics. Among the biggest coral reefs, there is the Great Barrier Reef of Australia, which is about 2,000 kilometers long. Did you know that coral reefs only cover around 0.1% of the entire world's oceans, but provide homes for 25% of marine species? Some reefs are so big that they can be seen from space, and they provide food and shelter to so many marine species. Did you know that coral reefs are often called the rainforest of the ocean? Did you know that 40 million years ago, the most diverse reefs were in the middle of Paris and London? It's not like that anymore, of course. It's Now it's Southeast Asia, but still, that's pretty cool. Did you know that corals, we are learning so much from them, they can potentially cure diseases like cancer, asthma, stuff like that. Millions of people around the world rely on corals for, for food and coastal protection. About coastal protection, you might be thinking, um, what can corals do to protect you? Well, it lowers the chance of a flood, a tsunami, or a tidal wave. Now, there's a thing called coral bleaching, and this is the result from a defense mechanism from, you guessed it, coral. When a coral bleaches, it doesn't mean that it's dead. Once a coral bleaches and they expel the algae, really all they're feeling is stress. But if the algae doesn't return, then they die. Now, it's estimated that 15% of coral reefs are dead and 60% are th under threat. Now, it's pretty grim for corals, but what is killing corals? Climate change, overfishing and pollution. Now, climate change is a big problem because it affects the acidity of the water, the temperature of the water and the agitation of the water. Pollution is also a big problem. It can cause diseases. It can reduce the amount of food that the polyps and the coral get. So is fishing. Fishing and bottom trawling, as well as deep sea mining, is destroying corals completely. And these problems are all man-made. But the good news is, you can do something about it. People all around the world are helping, working for corals, working for marine life, and you can join in too. There is a lot and a lot and a lot of hope through coral planting. Coral planting is when people go into the sea and create little coral nurseries, and then they put those corals into, the, into bland spaces with very few corals and make a massive reef out of it and these this project of rewilding the sea is helping so many people thrive and it teaches children like me how important it is to look after the ocean now what can we all do to protect coral reefs now you don't have to eat fish. You can you can't you can just stop eating meat in general, but that's a you choice. Eating fish isn't necessary. If you ever go snorkeling like I do, or swimming, just leave the corals alone. Let them be by themselves. Who knows? If you touch it, it could break. They're very delicate ecosystems. Now let me introduce you to someone amazing. Young eco activist Elijah, who lives in Australia next to the Great Barrier Reef. Take it away, Elijah. I'm all ears. Hi, Leo. Elijah from Elijah's World here. Thanks for getting in contact with me so we can collaborate a video about coral. As the first youth coral watch ambassador in Australia, I am always trying to use my voice to educate people about reefs and their importance. Coral Watch is an organisation based at the University of Queensland with the aim to increase general public understanding of coral reefs values and they allow the general public to get involved with helping the reefs by allowing them to participate in scientific research and education. 
I've been a coach ambassador for almost three years, and as an ambassador, I have given presentations and talks to schools and community groups. I've participated in World Science Fair, where I've been on the coral watch stall talking to the general public, and I've done my own beach cleans, inviting the general public to come along and join me in helping our environment by picking up rubbish. And I also make videos on my social media page to educate and inspire people about why we should help reefs and the environment and how we can. Thank you, Leo, and I love your work. And thank you for including me and my work in your video to highlight coral bleaching awareness. And here's an example of a video from my social media page, Elijah's World QLD. And Leo, together, us children, we will make a difference. Reefs are not just pretty amazing places. And so, yeah, they're beautiful, but they have other benefits as well like they provide coastal protection by reducing the power of waves hitting the coastline and also by the fact that they provide food and jobs for millions of people and probably my favorite reason is because i was just snorkeling this morning and there were lemon sharks there were turtles and those creatures wouldn't be here if the reef wasn't here because the reef provides an incredible home for loads of different marine life and so I got the lucky experience I got this morning because of the reefs. Thanks so much, Elijah. That's really cool what you do. And you're a great inspiration to everyone. Now I have some books to suggest. There's one by Irene, a marine biologist, also that's my dream job, <laughs> called Erin Spencer. And this book is called The World of the Coral Reefs. And the second one is by Helen Scales, which is called The Great Barrier Reef. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go follow Elijah, here's his Instagram account. Also like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!